So what I would like to do is today is just to discuss the best way we'll have to deal or to interact with regulatory authorities. I have been also working at the INSERM, like François Bellet, for a long period of time. I have also been appointed as the director for biologics and vaccines at the French ANSM, the French regulatory agency, from 2011 to 2016. And I was also a member of, of the CAT, the Committee for Advanced Therapies at the EMA during that time. So what I would like today is just to share with you my experience with the best way of interaction between regulatory agencies and biotech. So the agenda of this presentation will be first to give you insights into the kind of prerequisites that you will have to take in account before interacting with regulatory agencies. Then we will look at when to start the relationship with regulatory agencies. And I will try to explain to, new, to you the high number of ways of interaction with the agencies. And at the end, I will try to give you some practicalities. So the first question for you is uh, just to define the product you want to develop or manufacture. So ideally, target product profile uh, should be established to know exactly uh, which type of product you want to develop. And of course, the question will be if your product a drug, a medicinal drug, or any other type of product, whether it is a medical device or a cell preparation of whatever. And then for this, you have to be aware of the regulatory framework. You have a number of European directives and European regulation that will be applicable to the product you want to manufacture. And of course, these directives and regulation and guidelines will be different whether you are dealing with a drug or a medical device or another type of product. Just to give you a flavor of these regulations, I will not go into detail, but you have, for example, the Directive 2001-83 which is the basis of the regulation for the medicinal product. However, you have a different directive uh, if you want to deal with tissue and cells that will not fall into the medicinal product regulation. Also, you have a specific regulation for advanced therapy medicinal products, and this regulation encompasses all the gene therapy and cell therapy medicinal products. You have specific regulation for medical devices, and also you have different uh, directive and regulation for the different ways you can organize a clinical trial. So basically, again, I will not go into detail, but for example, a medicinal product is a product that is aimed at treating or preventing diseases in human beings. And the second part of the definition, this, the function, have to be exerted by a pharmacological, immunological, or metabolic action. So if your product is not acting by a pharmacological, immunological, or metabolic action, probably it is not a drug. But it, in case of doubt, European regulation implies when there is a doubt uh, whether the product uh, can or not be considered as a medicinal product, it is the medicinal product regulation that will apply to this product. However, of course, uh, if you look at the medical device definition and regulation, if your product is also aimed at treatment or alleviation of a disease, and at the bottom of this size, if it doesn't achieve its principal intended action by pharmacological, immunological, or metabolic action, then of course, it could be a medical device and therefore be regulated by other texts or other directives and specific regulation. So again, the final definition that is important for you is that vaccines have a special definition meaning that the vaccines are immunological medicinal products. So this is the definition of this kind of, of products, including vaccines. But you have to be aware that there are a long history of issues with, for the classification of vaccines as compared to gene therapy products. And as an example, uh, François Ballet was talking about COVID-19 vaccines. If you look at what are a part of these products are, meaning that the products that are not RNA-derived, but the products that have been developed by AstraZeneca or Johnson & Johnson, if you look at this product, they 
can fulfill the definition of a gene therapy product because it is really modify uh, adenoviruses that I use to bring the gene into the cells of the patient. However, from the regulation of uh, advanced therapies, it is clearly stated in this regulation that vaccines uh, or vaccines cannot be considered as gene therapy medicinal product. So again, it is important for you to know exactly what your product is and to which regulation it will correspond. So the second question is when to start the relationship with regulatory agencies. And the answer could be at the right time, not too early and not too late. So as François Ballet already explained to you, the drug development is a very long process. However, uh, I would say that before you have a lead candidate that is clearly identified, it is probably not useful to start interaction with uh, regulatory agencies. It's only when the product that you want to develop is clearly defined that you may start to interact with the agencies. The drug development or the steps for the drug development before the lead candidate identification is probably out of the scope of many regulatory agencies. So from the, the lead candidate definition or, or the designation, you will start de to deal with different directives depending on when you are in your development process. So, of course, the, the preclinical research will have to be performed, or at least the toxicology part will have to be performed in compliance with good laboratory practices. For the clinical research, you will need to have a product that is manufactured according to the good manufacturing practice. And, of course, you will have to deal with the good clinical practice for the design and the completion of your clinical trials. And also at the end, for the marketing authorization, you will have to deal again with the good manufacturing practices and also the, the good pharmacovigilance practices for the late phase of development and the marketing phase for your product. So in specific cases, the first interaction with EMA, the European Medicines Agency, is the classification. As I said, if you are not sure that your product is vaccine or a gene therapy product, the best way is to interact with the CAT, which is the Committee for Advanced Therapies, just to, to find out a legal decision on uh, which development program you will have to reach for your specific product. So also before the clinical trial application, and I will come back to this, the scientific advices are a good way to interact with the agencies. Of course, when you define, you will wish to define the regulatory needs you want to fill, the question regarding manufacturing, preclinical evaluation and design of clinical trial can be discussed before and with the agency before you apply for a clinical trial. And again, you will have to look at the relevant regulatory frame and all the guidances that are at your disposal before interacting with the agency. What are the various ways of interaction? So the first uh, question, mainly in Europe, is to be sure to identify the right body to interact with. In Europe, it is a bit complicated, but for the clinical trial authorization, these authorization are still in the remit of the national agency, the national competent authorities, EU. So if you want to perform a clinical trial in France, you will have to go to ANSM. Uh, if it's in Germany, you will have to go to the PI. In each member state, you will have to interact with each uh, national competent agency for the first clinical trial authorization for your product. However, when uh, you come to the marketing authorization and the marketing authorization enabling studies and, of course, the phase three pivotal studies, this should be discussed with EMA because the marketing authorization is in the remit of the European Medicines Agency. So, of course, for this part of your program, meaning that this is probably the late part of the program after the initial first in human clinical studies, you will have to interact with the EMA. And of course, for very specific issues regarding orphan drug designation 
or pediatric investigation plan. These uh, issues will also have to be discussed at the European level. Of course, in the US, it's much easier because you have only one agency which is dealing with all steps of the development of your product. So you have to keep in mind that when you want to discuss with an agency, the main topics are the CMC, which is the chemical manufacturing and controls. What is the critical quality attributes of your product. These attributes will define the identity, purity, potency of your product. The second item is issues related to preclinical studies, meaning that you can discuss with the agency the proof of concept studies, including the pharmacodynamic studies and dose determination, and of course, the tox studies. And this is really important for innovative drugs, because for innovative drugs, the drug studies are not fully predetermined by the agency. And of course, when dealing with the clinical development, whether it is for first in human studies or phase one, phase two, or phase three, if you have specific issue, don't hesitate to discuss with agency. So the main point or the main discussion that, that you may have with agencies are related to the quality and manufacturing when you have initial batches of product uh, which are available, meaning that before you have started the manufacturing of the product, meaning the GMP, the good manufacturing process, compliant manufacturing of your product, it is probably not really useful to interact with the agency because the agency will only look at the way the clinical batches will be manufactured and produced. Regarding the preclinical studies, of course, the proof of concept can be discussed with the agency, but it is mainly for GLP toxicity studies. Uh, it is much better to discuss these studies before and before starting these studies instead of coming to the agency with uh, the results already obtained. Because if there are issues with, the, with these results, you may have to start again the, the GLP toxicity from the beginning. And finally, for the clinical development, you can discuss the synopsis of any kind of clinical study. You can also discuss the, the dose escalation and the endpoint with the agency, of course, before and before uh, starting the, the clinical trial or even before applying for a clinical trial. So regarding the EMA, what you can discuss at the time of phase three and marketing authorization, roughly did the same. And for the sake of time, I will not go into detail into that. But again, you will have to discuss the CMC issue, the preclinical studies, and also the clinical development of your product. So Basically, uh, sometimes it's not easy for young biotech to understand the European, the EMA landscape, because there are a huge number of committees and parties and uh, whatever you call them. What is important is really to bear in mind that you will have to deal with specific committee depending on the questions you want to ask to the agency. For example, there is a specific committee, which is the COMP, dedicated to the evaluation of orphan designation. If you want to have a scientific advice or a protocol assistance, you will have to deal with the CHMP, with the Committee for Human Medicinal Product, or the SOAP, which is the Scientific Advisory Working Party. But if your product is a gene therapy or a cell therapy product, you will have also to interact with the CAT, the Committee for Advanced Therapy. For the Pediatric Investigation Plan in the PETCO, the Pediatric Committee of the Agency that you will have to interact with. And of course, at the time of evaluation, all the evaluation for marketing authorization and for the rest of the development will uh, be dealt with by CHMP, the CAT and the PRAC, which, which is the Pharmacovigilance Committee. You may also have to deal with specific committees, uh, scientific advisory groups, for example, regarding oncology or whatever subject is important for your program or your, for your, your product. And after the authorization, uh, the follow-up will be done by the CHMP, the PRAC, and sometimes with uh, specific committees. With the NSM and or with other agency, you will have to look at the way each agency is building up is its own program for scientific advice. This is just an example of the French agency, the French INSM, 
and uh, there is a new way to interact with the INSM through a portal, an electronic portal. So you may have scientific advices for the preparation of your uh, application. You may also have regulatory issues, uh, the opportunity to discuss regulatory issues with the agency. You have the pre-submission fast track if you can apply for this fast track designation. And of course, other question you want to discuss with the agency. So just be aware also that I, I tell you that for advanced therapy medicinal product or any kind of drug, currently authorization of clinical trials is under the remit of the national authority. It's only the marketing authorization that is regulated by EMA. However, if you look at the new regulation that should uh, be enforced in the next years, actually this new regulation for clinical trial was expected to be enforced in 2017. So there is now a kind of a four years delay in the application of this regulation, but the new regulation uh, will modify the way the clinical trials in Europe are authorized, and it will be through a central procedure that you will be allowed to perform a clinical trial. So this can be a big change in the way the clinical trials are evaluated at the European level. This is just the present regulation, which is the 2001-20 regulation, and, and the new one or will be enforced probably next year. Also aware that when you are dealing with very specific uh, products, which may be gene therapy products or vaccines, again, uh, AstraZeneca vaccines are uh, genetically modified organisms, you will have to to go through quite complicated uh, regulation for the dissemination and the content use of genetically modified organisms. So this is really a complicated procedure because it is not harmonized at the European level right now for a number of political reasons. I, I will not discuss this, but for example, in France, just be aware that when you want to deal with GMOs, you have to go through the HCB, which is the Haut Conseil des Biotechnologies. Part of this is dependent on the Ministry of Research, the other one from the Ministry of Environment. So you have to go first through this committee, then go back to the ANSM for clinical trial authorization. And there is a crosstalk between ANSM and the HCB uh, for to end up with the formal authorization for the clinical trial of your product. So again, be aware that sometimes it is difficult because, for example, in Germany, it's really easy to interact with the PI, which is National Competent Agency Clinical Drugs. However, in Germany, it is really difficult to get a final answer for the, for the use of GMOs, uh, even in humans. Again, as I told you, there are specific procedures that are available at the EMA level. For many uh, of these procedures available for any given product, you may have, for example, for the development or the commercialization of your product a full marketing authorization. Most of the innovative drugs usually have what is called a conditional marketing authorization, meaning that you are able to get to the market before you have a full validation of your product and therefore part of the pivotal studies are performed after in parallel to marketing of your product. And sometimes you may have marketing authorization under exceptional circumstances. This is, for example, the case for gene therapy products that are really very efficient but have been developed with a limited number of patients. For example, this is the case for rare or very rare diseases uh, in Europe. So again, even though, for example, if you look at the Streamville, which is a gene therapy product for aminosine deaminase deficiency, this product was authorized after a phase uh, one, two, three uh, clinical trial with only 18 patients, and it was uh, able to reach the market after such a very reduced evaluation because it was very active, and of course, it was dedicated to a very limited number of, of patients in Europe. And you have also what is called accelerated procedures, whether it is PRIME, the priority medicine policy for EMA, or the accelerated assessment. This procedure should be asked before the marketing 
authorization application, uh, meaning usually during or after phase three pivotal trial for the development of your drug. So I will not go into detail. I will, of course, give you all the slides, but just know that there are many different ways to interact and to have to have priority for your medicine. Of course, if it is already demonstrated that you have a really uh, outstanding effect on a specific disease. Don't dream too high. Uh, you will not be able to get a prime appli uh, application if your product is not efficient in early phases. I will not go into this one, but maybe I will uh, end up with some practicalities. So what is important to you right now is just to be aware of the regulation. And it can be a real maze for people who are not really used to regulation. So uh, you may be advised to seek regulatory assistance from consultants who are able to, to drive you through all the regulation uh, issues in Europe or in the US too. You should have to seek regulatory advices from the agencies when it's needed, not too early, but not too late. Early dialogue with agencies is of course a plus for the development of your product. Be aware that innovation is always of interest for all committees in regulatory agency. They are really uh, keen to discuss with you when it's dealing with innovation. For biological products, just again, take in account that all aspects are intermingled. If you change the CMC, you will change the product and the opposite is true too. And finally, full transparency with the agency is always appreciated. So I will stop here and of course, I will be happy to take any questions.